Hi, it's George Levy. I'm currently in Tel Aviv, Israel, where I'll be speaking at the D10 conference on decentralization. In this video, I'll be speaking to you about decentralization and why it's so important to blockchain. Stay tuned. Let's talk about decentralization as it applies to blockchain. To begin, I'd like to share with you a diagram that odds are you may have already come across when you've actually done any research on decentralization. In the diagram, you see centralized versus decentralized versus distributed networks. And people often think that when you look at this diagram, you're also talking about a decentralized blockchain. But what you need to take into context is that this graphic you're seeing is actually taken from a white paper that was published in 1962 by a gentleman Paul Barron and the white paper is called on distributed computing networks so what you're seeing is actually centralized versus decentralized versus distributing computing networks not blockchains if you go research further you may also come across this graphic this graphic is actually taken from one of the leading answers on the ethereum stack exchange and this graphic specifically shows a complete opposite of what the first graphic shows you that is this decentralized in the first graphic we saw matches distributed on the second graphic and distributed in the first graphic actually matches decentralized on the second graphic. So let's see exactly why that is by really looking at the types of decentralization as it applies to blockchain. In blockchain, there are three types of decentralization. The first one is architectural decentralization. And architectural decentralization has to do with how many physical computers are actually running on the system that you're seeing. So if you're looking at an architecturally decentralized blockchain, what you're looking at is a blockchain that's running on multiple computers that are all running the same exact blockchain. But that's one type of decentralization. According to Vitalik Buterin, who's a co-founder in Ethereum, the next type of decentralization is political decentralization. And when you look at political decentralization, what you're really looking at is something in the context of, say, for example, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is also politically decentralized because there is no CEO of Bitcoin that sets the rules. That is, all these different computers all around the world are running the Bitcoin protocol, but there is no CEO that actually runs and controls all those computers. So Bitcoin is not only architecturally decentralized because it runs on multiple computers, it is also politically decentralized because there's no CEO or controller on top that tells the Bitcoin network what to do. But that brings us to the next type of decentralization, which is logical decentralization. And in the context of this is, do all these different computers have the same exact purpose? In the context of Bitcoin, Bitcoin is not logically decentralized. Why? Because the entire Bitcoin network serves a common goal. It is the Bitcoin network, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. A great way to look at what logical decentralization means is that if you take the entire network and split it in half and take it off, the rest of the network will still be able to run doing exactly the same thing because the entire network all shares a common goal. And that is the three types of decentralization as they apply to blockchain. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something in the process. I bring you brand new videos every single week, so I encourage you to subscribe. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'm George Levy. We are changing the world one blockchain at a time. See you next time.